Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to yet another Destiny 2 Forsaken video. Today we'll be doing a guide and a comprehensive walkthrough for the entire Malfeasance quest. Now this quest took me a total of 15 hours to complete, so if you guys could do me a solid and drop me 4.5 likes, that would very much make my day. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself some friends and grind the living hell out of Gambit. There are 4 primeval bosses that can spawn by banking 75 motes per round. A captain, an ogre, a minotaur, and a cabal legionnaire. Now your objective is to spawn a rare ascendant boss that is a servitor with tentacles. This is the same boss that is basically riven from the final mission of the campaign. Now you might be asking, how does one specifically spawn this boss? Well, unfortunately there's no way of spawning him in tentacles as far as I know. Like the good old days of Destiny 1, you're gonna have to rely on a lot of RNG. It took our team 11 hours of constant gambit play before we even laid our eyes on the boss. This translates to roughly 28 gambit matches and about 55 bosses spawned in those specific matches. Now of course, this may not be as difficult for you, but for us, it was really really brutal. Think of this as if you were grinding for a rare Nightfall exclusive weapon, but worse. Now since the boss is so rare to spawn though, make sure you and your fire team are always prepared to gun him down in a quick fashion. If the other team kills their primeval before you take yours down, then you're shit out of luck and you're gonna have to grind all over again and you won't get the quest to actually proc. It seems like everyone who kills the special boss will get a seething heart exotic drop which activates the quest line. Again, after grinding all day long, I can positively say that nothing affects the boss's spawn rate. Play games over and over and try finishing rounds as quickly as possible to be efficient. This boss is slightly different to the others though. While dealing damage, he may spawn a small taken ball and this will be tethered to him which will cause him to be immune. Whenever you see him being immune, make sure to shoot these as quickly as possible. Now due to this boss being so rare to spawn and more difficult to kill, you'll want a fire team so you can coordinate efficiently. Once the seething heart drops, go ahead and take it to the drifter. He of course is located across from Akora in the tower. He's going to give you the next quest step which will require 25 taken mini boss or boss kills. This quest step is called City of Secrets. Now note that regular yellow bar taken enemies do not count towards the total progress. Many people would assume that grinding tier 3 blind wells would be the fastest way of completing this but waiting for an enemies moving against each other event is actually much much better. A single event will give you and your fire team all 25 kills which completes this quest step. Now grinding Aphelion's Rest or Chamber of Starlight over and over can work, but again, it'll take significantly longer. Once you're done with that quest step, the next one is called Darkness in the Light. You'll have to complete the mission variant of the Corrupted Strike. Now this can be found on the Dreaming City and it has a recommended power level of 580. Again, having a fire team here is definitely recommended and if you're under 560, you're gonna struggle a lot. This may get patched as I'm not sure if this is intentional, but as of now you're allowed to bring in a total of 6 people into this activity. I guess the more the merrier. Now spoilers ahead so be warned, here is some footage of the strike itself and you see Callum's ashes and his dead ghost after killing a cabal boss. It's honestly a very cool strike but it is a little bit difficult, so again, bring in as many friends as you can and make sure your power level is pretty high. You'll then get a depleted weapon core which you need to take back to the drifter and he'll give you a business as usual quest step. This requires you to win 10 gambit matches. Now each one is worth 10% and you also need to deposit motes of dark. 5 motes equal 1% so you'll need to deposit 500 of these motes of dark in total. Now dropping any motes from dying will subtract at a rate of times too. So basically just uh yeah don't die. Both should get completed around the same time, which is after 10 matches in total. So if you thought grinding Gambit in the first quest step was hard, well, here's another 10 matches that you're going to have to play. This quest step took my team approximately 2 hours to complete, and keep in mind this was 10 matches without us losing any of them. My biggest tip for this specific challenge is make sure you're banking frequently. I would recommend banking at 5 so you can summon a blocker and play risk free at the same time. If you're dying with moats, that'll set you back significantly significantly so be warned. And once you get the 10 needed wins and 500 motes deposited, the quest will automatically turn into lights out. 
This is the final quest step and will require you to do two different things, both of which are focused around killing enemy guardians. Now the first one is simple, get 25 kills against enemy guardians regardless of if you're invading or if they're invading you. If you're in a team, all you need to do is put a bullet in the enemy and a fire team member finishes them off and it'll still count for you. For this I would recommend getting the primeval out early and as a team just camping spawns. It's a very cheesy strategy but I know many players out there aren't that strong in terms of their PvP skill and they'll struggle with this step big time. The second part of this quest step is getting 4 kills during one invasion. This is another very difficult challenge that many will struggle with. The good thing is that you can also finish this challenge if your fire team members invade and get 4 kills. The only catch is that if a fire team member does this part for you, they'll need to do this 3 times instead of you doing it for yourself only once. So get that super energy up and grab some sleeper ammo if you want to get an easy 4 piece. And after that, all you have to do is go over to the drifter and he will hand you your brand new malfeasance. That is basically it guys, that is the entire quest right there summed up in a quick short video. Video. Hopefully this helped you guys out. If it did, a like rating is always very much appreciated. Make sure to subscribe for more daily Destiny 2 forsaken content. Have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you all later. Peace.